All right. Uh, hello. This is Miranda Alcaraz, and this is Adventures of Alcaraz episode. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, kind of here to give you guys an update on Banner and this new baby that's in my life. Um, as we're recording this, uh, tomorrow he will be two months old. So on July 3rd, our new little baby Banner will be two months old. And just wanted to give you guys an update about how that's all going and what's going on because I know you were following the story through the whole pregnancy and then he's here and now what, right? Um, in a way, it feels like it's been way longer than two months since he's been here. Um, and then in a lot of ways, it feels like it's been no time at all. Um, and of course, with everything that was going on when I was pregnant with Banner with COVID and quarantine and all of that. Um, he was born on May 3rd, and then the world erupted even more with this social justice movement that's happening and protests and riots and just all of it about two and a half weeks or three weeks after he was born. Um, it's been crazy. Time, time feels weird. Uh, but yeah, so Banner is here. Uh, the birth was great. If you guys have not watched the birth vlog and you want to know the story, I can't accurately tell you all the details of the story because anyone who has given birth knows, especially a natural birth, knows that I. it was like a dream to me or a movie that I watched. It's almost like an out-of-body experience. So um, I encourage you to watch the vlog so you can get more... Um, details from the people who were co more coherent than I was, like Julian and the midwives that were there and, and all of that. Um, but uh, yeah, I, Banner is my second child. So I know a lot of the questions that I had um, for people who had more than one kid were, um, were there differences in your ability to breastfeed the second or third baby? Um, how did the second baby sleep compared to the first baby? How did how did your first child take to the second child? And I know those are probably a lot of questions that maybe you guys have since I haven't been doing podcasts or vlogs since the birth of Banner. And those are kind of the things that I wanted to talk about today and let you guys know how that's all going. So um, where do I even start? So Banner has been a great baby um, the whole time, actually. Um, Many of you probably remember me talking about in the vlogs and I've just kind of shared a bunch of times throughout since Knox has been born about what a terrible sleeper Knox was. Knox, for the first year of his life, I don't think he slept more than two hours straight ever. Um, so Banner is a much better sleeper. Banner will give me and has since the beginning given me at least two hours, sometimes four hours Honestly, last night, for the first time ever, he slept for eight hours straight, He slept, which is crazy. And I was like, oh my gosh, is he okay? He slept from, I think, 8 p.m. till 4 a.m. without waking up. Um, and I, of course, um, know that that's not normal, and I'm not convinced that that's going to continue. But the bottom line is Banner has been a much better sleeper. Now, the next question I know a lot of mamas out there are going to ask is, well, what did you do different? Absolutely nothing. So um, if it helps you or maybe it doesn't help you, maybe it makes you even more frustrated to know that I did nothing different with Banner than I did with Knox and he just is a better sleeper. Um, we, I co-sleep, which I know people have their thoughts and opinions on that, um, but it worked really well with Knox, obviously not to get him to sleep, but to allow me because he was waking up so much to not have to get up and out of bed every single time. I'm still co-sleeping with Banner and Julian has been sleeping in the guest room. Um, he didn't do that when I was, when Knox was new, but Knox still to this day wakes up a lot of times in the middle of the night. And so if we were both in the same bed in our bedroom and Banner was waking up every couple hours and Knox was waking up one or two times throughout the night, neither one of us would get any sleep. So he has been sleeping in the guest room. We're, we're going to change that soon um, and start putting Banner in a crib next to our bed. Um, again, I'm not advocating for co-sleeping. You definitely want to read into it and make sure that you feel comfortable with it and do it safely and everything. But it is what we've chosen to do as a family. Um, and 
I've really enjoyed it. Uh, I don't plan on having any more babies. You know, you never know what could happen. But um, so I've really just been trying to enjoy the time. And it, I, I do believe that it can create some really strong bonds to sleep next to your baby. I also believe that it's very natural and that if you were to go back in time or maybe in some cultures that don't have as much space as we do in our homes and things like that, that that's probably what you would find. Um, and so, yeah, it's worked out really good. And he's a pretty good sleeper. He doesn't always do the best with naps. Uh, sometimes he'll go all day without napping. And um, we have this business to run. And I was planning on, I'm not going to talk a lot about the things going on in the world right now, because there's enough discussion about that, quite honestly, everywhere you look. Um, but I was planning on taking a much more chill maternity. I wouldn't call it leave because there are definitely some things with the business that I was planning on continuing to do no matter what. But I got dragged into working more or being more present in with our staff and with our community earlier than I expected because of everything that's going on in the world. Um, and so it has been hard sometimes when Banner won't take a nap at all, all day long, um, to find windows. We finally found a, uh, a schedule, like just this last week, actually, that's working really well for us when it works, um, where, because we do have childcare help with Knox and we have, um, for a long time, especially since we've lived here where he spends his days with Julian's mom and she's kind of his full time caretaker. Well, Banner's a newborn and he's breastfeeding every two hours. Um, and so she obviously is not going to take Banner to her house with her. Um, I'm not interested in, because I don't have to, and I'm very lucky for this, but I'm not interested in pumping five bottles worth for her to take <laughs> with uh, her to her house. I want to be with Banner right now. I want to enjoy this time. I want to actually breastfeed him because I am able to do that. Um, so obviously he stays here with me and Knox goes um, with Lucy the way that he always has. This last week, we kind of figured out a schedule where um, Lucy will still come at 8.30 and she'll hold Banner and so that I can actually spend some time with Knox. Usually from like 8.30 to like 10, it's just I get alone time with Knox, which that was probably one of the hardest transitions for me was having so much alone time with Knox. And we have a very strong bond to always having Banner attached to me. Um, I think I was struggling with it more than Knox was actually. So, and then Knox will lay down for his nap here, usually around 10 a.m. And Lucy will help out with Banner until Knox wakes up from his nap. So till like noon. So I have from like 10 until noon of no baby work time. <laughs> um, and that's really the only time, unless he's asleep at night, um, that I don't really have to worry about him at all. And we have some bottles. I do pump a little bit so that if he needs to eat during that time, she'll feed him. Um, but that's my window to work and uh, kind of be uninterrupted there. Sometimes not Knox wakes up way earlier than noon, so that two-hour window turns into a one-hour window or a 45-minute window. But that's kind of what we're working with right now. When Knox wakes up, she takes him and... Uh, then I have Banner alone. Julian will come home and we'll kind of juggle him back and forth. But it's been tough, obviously. Like, we're still in quarantine. Not fully, fully here where we live in Washington. But I am still staying home and working from home. And that was kind of the plan anyway. Um, I still haven't gone anywhere other than doctor's appointments and the Starbucks drive through I think I went to the office once when we did our DEXA scan body fat test. And Lucy's house, and that's it for since March. <laughs> so uh, I don't know if that's healthy or good. I know a lot of you guys are probably like in a similar situation, but it can be tough to try to figure out this whole new work thing with two babies and at home. Um, but we're doing pretty good. And if if banner naps during the day, it gives me a little bit of extra work time. But it's it's a juggle and it's a struggle and. We'll keep, we'll keep figuring it out. Um, I know a lot of you guys probably have questions about the breastfeeding. How's that going? I had no issues with milk production with Knox. Um, and 
I always felt very lucky about that because I have heard so many struggles of moms who have just felt like they're not doing their job somehow or so confused as to why they can't get, you know, more milk production. I didn't have any of those problems with Knox and I haven't had any of those problems with Banner. Um, I actually had somebody DMing me yesterday asking me about that. I don't know that my answers are the reason that I don't have any issues, but when people ask me about it, I tell them that I eat like 2,500 calories a day and I drink, this is not like an exaggeration, at least 100 ounces of water um, a day. I think from what I've read uh, that water has more to do with it even than the calories do, Um, that if you're dehydrated, it really can mess up your supply. So is that the reason I've had no issues? It might be part of it. I think part of it's also genetic. I think part of it's also how you're healing from your birth and how you're sleeping and stress and all of that can all play into it. But um, those are the things that I do to make sure that I can continue to breastfeed him. And he's done really, really well. I know sometimes it's not the mom and milk supply. It's the baby having a hard time or the mom and the baby together having a hard time figuring out how to breastfeed. It's actually like a skill that the baby needs to learn. Um, And he's done really great. The same that Knox did really great. So I feel really lucky that I've had that happen twice now. Um, Yeah, I know uh, that I get a lot of questions also about fitness. Like, okay, so rehab versus bounce back and weight loss and blah, 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 right? All the things. Um, I've been pretty vocal about that on my social media. But if you haven't seen it... um, I did do the lying in phase. I I I want I wouldn't say that I was like fully hardcore lying in for a full 30 days. Um that kind of got interrupted by some of the things that came up uh with work um that were very stressful uh and then my response to that stress was feeling like I needed to move a little bit more and get outside a little bit more and at least walk and stuff. So the restful, relaxing, I'm just going to lay in bed completely for 30 days was cut a little bit short, but I definitely got a good solid, I would say at least two and a half weeks of it. And it was awesome. Um, it was just peaceful and bonding for myself and Banner and Knox would come in and lay with us every morning and watch cartoons while I was like feeding Banner and they're Those are photos and those are memories and I'm so glad that I did that. Um, And then once I started moving, uh, it was walking at first. It's not as sunny here as it was in Southern California when I had uh, Knox where I was like walking like hours a day in the sun and sweating and the sweat felt good. It was pretty rainy here um, during that time period and I, I have no issue walking in the rain, but it's you know, when I'm walking with Banner either in the in the mom carrier or in his stroller, if it's hardcore raining, that can be tough. Um, so I walked a lot, um, not as much as I did with Knox, but I got some good walks in. And then I started doing some functional progression rehab type stuff to rehab my core and my pelvic floor and just honestly get my body to feel more stable as like a whole unit again, you you feel weird after having a baby. It's similar to an injury, but also different. Like your body, because it's this nine month long period of your body changing, where an injury is like more acute usually, like it's a broken bone, like one spot or like a torn ACL or whatever it might be. Your whole body does weird stuff when you're pregnant and it doesn't just like go back to normal right away. So you kind of feel weird and all over. Um, so the functional progression is something that was created by Erica, who was my doula. If you watched any of the um, vlog episodes and she was in those, and I talked a lot about her on the podcasts. And it's all about um, just rehabbing your core and your pelvic floor. So I started adding in some of that stuff and testing out um, the new street parking rehab program that we're going to be putting out for new moms. Um And that program slowly transitions you into actually doing stuff that looks more and more like a workout. Um, For me now, I feel pretty good. There's definitely movements that I'm still avoiding. I haven't, I mean, I haven't been doing pull-ups. I haven't been doing box jumps. I haven't been running. 
I've done, I think, one workout with push-ups on my knees um, and really just feeling for, do I feel any sort of, I remember when I was, when I was um, postpartum with Knox, when I would try to do push-ups, it felt like almost like a burning in the middle of my abs, um, where that like diastasis, that ab separation was. And I pay attention to that a lot. And I pay attention to my position and all of those things now. I've slowly added weight. Um, we started doing the 20 rep back squat program. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with that, um, this is a way that I've used. I used it after I hurt my neck. I used it after I hurt my knee. I used it after I was uh, pregnant with Knox. And so I'm going to do it again because it controls how quickly you're adding weight to your squatting movement. And you could, you're only adding a certain amount of weight each time. And I'm only doing it once a week. But basically, you do 20 squats unbroken. I started with the empty women's bar, which is 35 pounds. And then the next week, literally a whole week later, I did it with 45 pounds. And I'll be up to, I think, 85 pounds now. So um, it's a way to add weight slowly, but get that strength back um, while you're learning how to hold positions and everything again. We've been doing a lot of stuff with the sled, um, so much so that I've dragged the <laughs> street parking staff in with me. Um, the sled is something that I used in recovery from my neck injury, and I used it a little bit with Knox. Our neighborhood that we lived in with Knox was not as forgiving if I would have been rolling around with the sled too much. I feel like people would have not appreciated that in Orange County, California as much. Um, but yeah, just trying to be creative with maintaining muscle mass. We got a DEXA scan at four weeks, which I would not recommend for anyone. A DEXA scan is a body fat test. <laughs> And I know what you're thinking. You're probably like, why would anyone get their body fat tested at four weeks postpartum? I'm weird. I like numbers. I like measurements. I like to see um, how things progress. And I know weight is useless. Um, and so I did it four weeks postpartum with Knox because I had done it shortly before I got pregnant with Knox. Um, and I had done it shortly I mean, like six months before I got pregnant with Banner. Um, so why not? Why not have another data point, right? So we went and did that. And this time I lost muscle. I lost muscle in this pregnancy, which I didn't in Knox's pregnancy. Um, it might have been that I laid around a little bit longer um, after with this one. It honestly might have been because I know I was eating less calories when I was pregnant with Banner than I did with Knox. So that might have had a little bit of something to do with it. I did have to scale a lot more in the pregnancy with Banner than with Knox because it was my second pregnancy. And um, some of the, I mean, anybody who's been pregnant more than once will tell you that stuff happens a lot quicker in the second one. So this, the scaling happened a lot sooner. Um, but yeah, I was not super stoked about that. So I've been trying to be creative with the sled and, and those sorts of things to hopefully gain some of that muscle back. Um I, ha I still have like 15 pounds to lose as far as like weight on the scale. But again, try not to focus on that and focus on gaining the muscle mass back first because that will ultimately help me. And um, I have days definitely where I like see photos or videos and I'm like, ugh, like it still just doesn't look like me and it's annoying because it's taking longer this time or whatever. Um, but I'm confident that as long as I just stay the course that eventually I'll get back to feeling like myself again. And we'll see, we'll see what, um, this postpartum recovery, where it takes me, because I think every time it's different and you can't expect to ever go back to exactly where you were pre first pregnancy, second pregnancy, whatever. So we'll see, but I feel good. I have no like lingering issues as far as I can tell from the birth or the, <clears throat> from the birth or the pregnancy. And um, I'm excited. Uh, the world is weird right now. Um, more than anything, I fear for like where we're all going to be when my sons are teenagers or adults. Um, that's probably what gives me more anxiety than anything else. Um, but in general, we're doing good. We're happy. The reason Julian's not here um, with me is he's actually walking banner. Um, around the neighborhood so that we could film this because we didn't have anybody to hold him. So we're good. And I just wanted to check in with you guys and kind of give you an update. We'll try to give some more updates 
but I do put a lot on my Instagram. So if you don't follow me already, it's at fearless Miranda. Um, eventually we'll make a vlog so you can see the two boys. Oh, hold on. I'm like, my throat's dry. There's one thing I forgot. Knox loves Banner. He is obsessed with him. He has never gotten mad at him. He has never said, take him away. He has never <coughs> um, shown any real, real signs of jealousy toward him. He'll say sometimes, like, if I'm holding Banner, he'll tell Julian to hold him. Or if he wants to um, play with somebody and that person's holding Banner, he'll tell him to give him to somebody else. But he has never, like shown any sort of anger or jealousy that has been directed at Banner. He snuggles him. He loves him. They take baths together. He does this cute little like wiggle, wiggle, chico, chico to his toes. And he talks to him and he tries to make him laugh. He helps me in the bathtub, like wash him. And it's just great. So um, I, I would like to think that some of the stuff we did to prepare Knox for Banner coming, like talked about it a lot. Talked about who was in my tummy, read him the books. Um, Knox, a, Knox is a very sensitive, sensitive soul and like very empathetic child. So that might have something to do with it. But he is so sweet to him and so great. Um, and that's it's just awesome. Uh, we'll see how long that lasts before they can start, you know, arguing with each other or fighting over toys because obviously none of that's happening yet. But um, yeah, that's been... That's been really great. And actually, he's so smart. So Knox will be three um, in a month. And he's just so smart. Like, I'll ask him, like, where did Banner come from? And he'll say, Mama Tummy. Or I'll say, and then I'll say, where did you come from? And he'll say, Mama Tummy. And then, you know, like, he grabs my little, like, chub rolls on my tummy. And I'll say, what happened to Mama Tummy? And he'll say, it's empty. And so, um, I think talking to him a lot through the pregnancy uh, was good. And I would encourage any of you guys um, that have that situation to try it out um, and try to explain what's going to happen and who this person's going to be and how they're going to come. And he was there when he came out and he's, I mean, it seems like he's got all the dots connected in his head. So um, yeah, of course, I know a lot of people wondered about that, but that's it. That's how we're doing. That's what we have going on. And um I hope that helps and answers some questions and hope you guys are all doing good and staying safe and staying healthy out there. Um, we'll see you later.